after studying this module, you shall be able to know what is contusion or bruise, factors affecting appearance of bruise, types and aging of the bruise, difference between hypostasis and bruise, and true bruise and false bruise, as well as the medical legal importance of bruise. Blunt force injuries part 2, in the first part we have already covered abrasion and lacerations. So now what is contusion or bruise, the commonly called as? A contusion or bruise is an effusion of blood into the tissues due to rupture of the blood vessels, namely veins, arterioles, vessels. Bruise is also a two dimensional injury and is always measured in terms of length and breadth as in the abrasion. The weapon of offense is blunt force like stone, club, stick, hammer, all these. Now, bruise is always situated in the dermis, subcutaneous tissue and fat layers. It is caused by blunt force impact. The color of the bruise when fresh is bright red with slight pale area in the center as a result of extravasation. Further, I will discuss it later how with the help of color changes, we comment upon the age of the bruising. Usually in bruise, there is no destruction of the superficial layers of the epidermis, unlike abrasion. However, bruise may occur along with the laceration or abrasion. A bruise along with abrasion is termed as abraded contusion. If the contusion is more prominent than abrasion, then it is termed as contused abrasion. If we see the size of the bruise, the size of the hemorrhage, if it is 0.1 to 2 millimeter, then it is termed as petechial hemorrhages. If it is 2 to 5 millimeter, then it is termed as echimosis. Usually, when we call bruise, it is more than 5 millimeter of size. Bruise is associated with underlying hematoma as there is extravasation of blood. A bruise may be associated with swelling of the area due to accumulation of blood from the underlying ruptured blood vessels and may form a fluctuant mass. The shape of the bruise may not always correspond to the offending weapon as a result of swelling of the tissues. However, if death occurs immediately, then oozing of the blood stops and shape may be similar to that of the weapon. The margins of the bruise are not sharply defined and usually blurred. Generally, greater the force of violence used the more extensive will be the bruise. Factors modifying appearance of bruise. Condition and type of the tissue. That is the one of the most important factors. Bruise appears fast if the tissue is vascular and loose such as face, vulva, scrotum as a slight degree of violence may cause a large bruise as there is sufficient space for the blood to accumulate. If the tissues are firmly supported, containing thick fibrous tissue and thick dermis such as abdomen, back, palm, soles and scalp, a moderate blow will produce relatively small bruise. In a good muscle tone, like in boxers or athletes, bruising is less. Resilient areas like buttock and abdomen, they show less bruising. Bony prominences, bruising is less smart as the underlying bone acts as an anvil with the skin between the bone and the weapon. The chronic alcoholics bruise easily. The second parameter is the age. The people of extremes of age like children and geriatric age group, they bruise easily because of the softer tissue and loose delicate skin in the child and loss of subcutaneous tissue cardiovascular changes in the old age, elderly persons. Sex. In women, because the tissue are more delicate and subcutaneous tissue fat is more, they bruise easily than men. The same principle applies to the obese people who bruise easily than thin built people. Then color of the skin. Bruising is more clearly seen in fair skinned people due to the obvious reasons than dark skinned where the bruising is better felt than seen. And this always needs comparison with the opposite identical half of the body. So the color photograph does not depict the true color of the bruise and if used in the court of law, one must use a color scale for comparison. Now the effect of embalming also alters the appearance of the bruise. 
becomes more prominent in case of embalmed bodies. Natural disease. Bruising occurs easily in areas where vessels are having atherosclerotic changes. In persons who are suffering from purpura, leukemia, scurvy, vitamin K deficiency, hemophilia, prothrombin deficiency and phosphorus poisoning, bruising appears very prominently following a minor trauma. Then gravity shifting of the blood. Sometimes bruising does not appear at the site of the impact. They are the two are at entirely different locations. A deep bruise due to some crushing injury, especially over the bony prominences, may take a long time to be visible and may not even appear over the actual point of impact. The blood may trickle down through the facial planes due to the effect of the gravity and also because the loose areola tissue is unable to hold the extravasated blood in the same plane and may appear where the tissues are superficial. And this is called as ectopic bruising or percolated bruising or migratory bruising or contusion. The hemorrhages around the soft tissue of the eye and eyelids are known as spectacle hematoma or black eye. And this is caused due to various reasons like a direct blow over the eye, blunt impact over the forehead where the extravasated blood underneath the side of impact trickles down and settles around the eye and eyelids. The fracture of the floor of the interior fossa of the skull. The basal fracture is manifested as bruise behind the ear and this is termed as battle sign. Similarly, due to effect of gravity in fracture jaw, bruise may appear in the neck. Fracture pelvis, bruise may appear in the thigh. Or a blow over upper thigh, bruise may appear around the knee. A kick on the calf muscle, bruising may appear around the ankle. The types of bruising. Various types of bruising. The pattern bruising. A pattern bruise is the type of bruise or contusion which reflects the size and shape of the weapon of offense over the point of impact. The medical legal importance of such bruise is more as they reflect an idea of the possible weapon of offense. Few examples I will discuss here. Railway track bruise or tram line bruise or contusions. They are caused when elongated pliable objects like a bamboo stick or an iron rod or policeman's cane, they struck over the body. The bruise then appears as two parallel lines at the point of impact with an undamaged zone in between, just like a railway line. The mechanism behind this injury is that when the weapon struck the skin, it pushes the skin downwards causing rupture of the underlying marginal blood vessels while on the contrary the center of the weapon compresses the skin underneath and this causes little or no damage to the blood vessels due to absence of any bony prominences and this when this momentary impact is released the oozing of blood form the marginal vessels and this gives rise to shape of the two parallel lines running together a whip will produce similar type of bruise but as the weapon is flexible Tram line bruise may be found all over the body encircling the trunk. In vehicular accidents, the pattern bruises of tire, car radiator, headlight of car, all of these may be found. A muzzle impression over the skin in case of contact wounds, in case of firearm injury, this is also a type of bruise, pattern bruise. Texture of clothing, especially if it is tight, sometimes may leave the pattern bruise. Bruises from straps, belts, chains, they also leave the pattern behind. In many injuries, along with the pattern bruise, pattern abrasions may also be present as happens in case of a ligature mark in a hanging. Then delayed bruising. Sometimes a deep bruise may take hours and even days to appear unlike superficial bruises and deeper extravasation of blood may not even appear as bruise. In order to rule out any deep bruise, therefore, Examination of the victim should be done at least 48 hours after the first examination because occasionally the injuries may be produced after death but bruise may manifest after death due to further escape of the extra vegetated blood from the ruptured blood vessels due to gravitation. And these bruises are termed as come out bruise. 
Thus, in these cases, a difference of opinion between the two observers or doctors may occur who examined the person at two different times, antemortem and postmortem, or even in the antemortem at a gap of more than two days. Then, deep tissue and organ contusion. This also affects all the organs can be contused and deep contusions are mainly demonstrated during autopsy as the blood is drained from the blood vessels and post-mortem autolytic changes continues. The contusions on vital centers of the brain can be fatal and a minor contusion in the respiratory center or any such area can be life threatening. The contusion may also be associated with the rupture of the solid viscera leading to hemorrhagic shock and ultimately death. Now aging of the bruise. A bruise or contusion heals by destruction and removal of the extravasated blood. The underlying mechanism basically the disintegration of the red cells by hemolysis where the hemoglobin is broken down into its byproducts by the action of enzymes. Various factors which affect the color of contusion include depth of the bleeding, the environmental lighting, the overlying skin color as well as the amount of bleeding. Determination of age of bruise is medical legally significant for asserting the age of the injury as initially the bruise will be red in color due to oxyhemoglobin. Then within few hours to up to three days it will be blue in color because of the hemoglobin. Then fourth day it becomes bluish black in color due to the conversion of hemoglobin into hemosiderin. Then around fifth to sixth day it becomes greenish in color due to hematoidin. Then seventh to twelfth day it becomes yellowish in color because of the conversion into bilirubin. And in second week it returns to its normal appearance. Exceptions are the subconjunctival bruising where typical color changes are not seen and they heal straight right from red to yellow. The antemortem and postmortem bruising also needs to be differentiated at some times they may be produced because of the pressure of the putrefactive gases which further displace the blood out of the already damaged vessels causing this postmortem bruise or due to sometimes due to any postmortem injury a body may be rolled down the hill after death or while shifting the dead body by rough handling or due to the influence of the gravity the bruise may appear late after death. So this is the table which differentiates between an antemortem and postmortem bruise how we can differentiate. More important is to differentiate between the hypostasis and bruise. Hypostasis that is the postmortem staining. Because invariably this question arises when we conduct the autopsy. The points of differentiation are if you see the cause in case of hypostasis it will be due to the distension of vessels with the blood after death. Whereas in bruise it will be due to the extravasation of blood from the ruptured blood vessel. If we the site in case of hypostasis it will be only over the dependent parts of the body. Whereas the bruise, it will occur at the site of impact and can be found anywhere over the body. The postmortem staining or the hypostasis, there will be no associated swelling. Whereas in bruise, it will be. Epidermis, if we examine, there will be no associated abrasion in case of hypostasis. Sometimes in abrasion, in uh, uh, bruising, associated abrasions may be present. If we examine the color, in case of hypostasis, it will be uniformly bluish purple. Whereas the color changes, typical color changes in case of bruise occur as the injury progresses depending upon the time. If we give an incision at the site, the blood is seen in the surrounding area which can be easily washed away. That is a sign for uh, hypostasis. Whereas in case of bruising, this blood cannot be washed away easily. And we, if we apply deep pressure over the area in hypostasis, it may produce blanching effect, especially if it is not fixed. 
whereas in case of bruise there will be no such phenomena then artificial bruises the artificial bruises or the false bruises or the fake bruises they are produced over the body mainly for the purpose of malingering they are produced by rubbing of irritant substances on the skin they are mainly produced to bring false charge of assault against an enemy or for malingering purpose in order to take medical leave the substances which are used for the purpose of malingering are basically the juices of calotropis that is oak or madar in common language the semi carpus anacardium the marking nut or the dhobi nut and the plumbago rosea also called as lal chitra these are the vegetable poisons found in our country sometimes the unusual agents like dithrenol have also been used this table summarizes the difference between a true and artificial bruise true bruise are produced by blunt force whereas artificial bruise are produced by usually by the juice of any irritant material the true bruise will be present may be found anywhere on the body whereas the artificial bruise will be present only on the exposed and accessible parts the typical color changes will be found in case of true bruise where it will be, be absent in case of artificial bruise if you examine the shape there will be round or oval and may mimic the weapon of offense in case of true bruise whereas artificial bruise there will be no shape irregular shape the margins will not be well defined and are diffuse in cases of true bruise whereas in case of artificial bruise there will be well defined regular and covered with vesicles as well the redness and inflammation will be seen at the site in true bruise whereas it will be in the surrounding skin due to the irritant effect in case of artificial bruise we examine the contents of the bruise the vesicle sometimes it will be extra vegetated blood in case of bruise whereas it will be acrid serum in case of artificial bruise itching will be absent in true bruise present in artificial bruise vesicles may be found there in case of artificial bruise the chemical test will be positive for the concerned chemical where it will be negative uh, in case of artificial bruise in case of uh, true bruise in case of any confusion the same needs to be demonstrated while conducting the autopsy the condition of bruise so to differentiate the with the patches of post mortem lividity or the dark color of the skin the scalp contusions are demonstrated by reflecting the scalp or making an incision bruising of the neck are demonstrated by reflecting the skin and exposing the underlying structures and the inner aspect of the skin in the subcutaneous tissues wherever confusion arises bruise can be demonstrated by giving parallel incisions through the skin deep bruises are demonstrated by giving deep incisions into the muscle examination of whole body under uv light makes the bruise visible which can be missed by naked eyes now the medical legal importance of the bruise the age of the injury can be determined by the color changes in patterned abrasion associated with bruise the weapon of the offense are identified the degree of violence is determined by their size the character and manner of injury may be known by the distribution pattern for example bruises of different size at different age distributed all over the body of a child indicates child abuse in manual strangulation bruises of the fingertips are left around the neck bruising over the shoulder blades indicates spinning on the ground by the assailant in sexual assault cases bruising may be found in the inner aspect of thigh the manner of production most commonly bruising are accidental in nature and are produced mainly on the forehead elbow knee or any such bromic prominences in homicidal injuries they can be found in any portion of the body due to blunt force impact self inflicted bruises are extremely rare but may be found in case of hysteria or mentally ill person as a result of repeated banging of the head or causing self pain bruises are medically legally less valuable than abrasion it is sometimes difficult to point out the exact site of impact as ectopic bruising appear away from the site of impact the direction of force also cannot be deduced from the bruise the age estimation of the injury is 
again difficult as because of the visualization in dark skin pupil may be masked by the postmortem lividity. Then there may be six pony bruises which are a, a penny or disquiet shaped bruises usually up about one to two centimeter in diameter and in a group of three to five caused by the pressure of fingertips. They are commonly found bilaterally over the lateral part of the chest in child abuse cases or in the inner part of thigh or abdomen in cases of sexual assault and in throttling found bilaterally over the lateral aspect of the neck. Then what could be the complications of a bruise or contusion? A contusion may contain 20 to 30 ml of blood and even death of a person may occur due to multiple contusions where one third of the blood loss occurred due to internal hemorrhage and shock. Infection may set in into the pooled blood which may serve as a good site for the bacterial growth. The gangrene may set in due to death of the tissues. Rarely due to sudden compression of the subcutaneous tissue, death may occur due to fat embolism. To summarize this topic of bruise, a contusion or bruise is an effusion of blood into the tissues due to rupture of the blood vessels namely veins, arterioles and vessels. Bruise appears fast if the tissue is vascular and loose such as face, vulva, scrotum as a slight degree of violence may cause a large bruise as there is sufficient space for the blood to accumulate. A patterned bruise is the type of contusion which reflects the size and shape of the weapon of offense over the point of impact. Occasionally the injuries may be produced before death but bruise may manifest after death due to further escape of the extra vegetated blood from the ruptured blood vessels due to gravitation. Artificial bruises or false bruises or fake bruises are produced over the body mainly for the purpose of malingering by various agents like calotropis, semicarpus anacardium and plumbago.